Let's begin our study of chemistry because it is all that matters. And how are we going to begin our study of chemistry? We're going to begin it by studying matter. Don't these strawberries look good? I love summer strawberries. Fresh, juicy, ripe, sweet, red strawberries. But have you ever thought about the chemistry involved in strawberries? Think about the nutrients, vitamins, minerals in the soil. Think about the water concentration in that soil and how that water gets up into the roots and carries other nutrients and vitamins up through the strawberries. And then the photosynthesis that takes place to change the chemicals in the strawberry to sugar stored as the fruit. And then the digestion process that your body undergoes to get those nutrients from the strawberry out into the tissues of your body. All those things take chemistry. And when we're talking about this, strawberries are matter. So the study of chemistry is really the study of matter. Matter, M-A-T-T-E-R. And when we study matter, matter is anything that has a mass and takes up space. Strawberries have a mass and strawberries take up space. So strawberries must be matter. And if we study strawberries, we must be studying chemistry. Well, while we're on the subject of food, what about spaghetti? Don't you love a nice, hearty plate of spaghetti? Have you ever thought about why your mom or your co the cook adds salt to the water before they bring it to a boil? Some of it is to flavor the, salt, the, the spaghetti, but some of it is to change the colligative property of the boiling point of water. And what about that metal pot? What alloys, combinations of metals, make that pot so it doesn't melt when you add fire to it? But those same metals will conduct the heat from the fire or flame below it into the water so the water will boil so then the water can then soften those stiff rods of noodles into the flexible noodles that you will sop up all that wonderful spaghetti sauce for you. How much chemistry is involved in simply cooking a little bit of pasta? Chemistry affects all aspects of life and most natural events because all living and non-living things are made of matter. So chemistry affects everything. Now we can think of chemistry as the central science. And why do we think of it as central science? It's not because you took biology as a freshman, chemistry as a sophomore, and physics as a junior, so it was in the middle. No, chemistry is the central science because every other scientific realm uses chemistry in its search for answers. Physicists use the idea of motion of the atoms. Biologists have to study microchemistry and bi biological chemistry. How do you think that Watson and Crick figured out DNA? Geneticists use this in biotechnology. Ecologists, environmentalists have to figure out the chemical compounds that are adding to, destroying, or saving the earth. Geologists have to figure out the composition of the soil. Astronomers use spectrophotography and the understanding of coloration of the light to figure out what the stars are made out of. So basically, chemistry is involved in every aspect of science. Chemistry is involved in every aspect of life. So at the end of this video, why don't you take out a piece of paper, think about all the aspects of chemistry that affected your life today. How was chemistry a part of your life each and every day.